I want to ask you this. Governor Perry won with less than 40 percent of the vote last time. He had right. he had Carol Keaton Strayhorn, who uh, ran as a Democrat or an independent, even though she was really a Republican, but she couldn't win the primary. He had Kinky Friedman in there. You had Chris Bell in there from Houston. He had a bunch of different people in there. And uh, and Governor Perry, he I, I forget what he had, 36 or 39 percent of 39, I think. Some, yeah. Something like that. Uh, so, I mean, certainly you did not have a majority of, of Texans say, we want Rick Perry to continue as the governor, but he got a plurality. He got the most votes, so he wins. Um, you've got a, a Republican primary that the two are bloodying each other up politically pretty badly. They're going after each other pretty harshly. How do you see this happening where you can sneak in and grab the attention away from people who are focusing on that very public race? How do you get the attention, other than showing up on my show, how do people find a difference in you, the Republican candidate, as yeah. compared to the very high-profile Republicans that they have to choose from? I hope we get a couple point bump here today because I know you've got a lot of listeners. We are running a decentralized grassroots campaign, Joe, people all over the state. You've seen it, obviously, in the Tea Party. I was there Monday night with you at the Tea Party in, in North Houston. You've Great. seen it all over the state. We had Medina for Governor teams on the ground that kind of sprung up spontaneously on April 15th at 45 Tea Parties from El Paso to Beaumont from Harlingen to DFW and all points in between, people are hungry for one of us, someone who's been out here working hard, making a living, paying attention to the political realm to get in there and advocate and fight, fight. Where's the governor's fight on that border thing y'all were talking about on Monday? You've got all of these evacuee deportees going through Presidio, and, and he sounded like he was tossing out yesterday's newspaper. We're ready for someone who's going to defend freedom and defend and, and, and you know what? It, right and, you know what? It sounds great. But when I talked to the governor the other day, and you heard the you heard the conversation, he wrote a letter to the co- what, what, what else can he do? Um, he, he can go call to, he can go, the he border sheriffs. He can send the rangers to Presidio. He can secure and control that border. No, he can absolutely County. not. He cannot. But Deborah, help. let's 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 hold on because this is good campaign speak. But the governor can't send the Texas National Guard uh, to fight the United States Army or the, or the United States government to stop them from bringing these illegals in, whether no, we like it or not. Not, Texas is. I understand. The down there to but help that's not the issue. He, he's already. Deborah, I'm not. I'm not here to. You, you can call the, the governor and have this argument. I heard what he said the other day. I try to do my best job, my due diligence as an interviewer and as a talk show host. And what he said was, he asked that the government not do this and and, and stage these illegals in Presidio. He also has a request in to use uh, to have a thousand Texas National Guard soldiers there to protect the border, and he's not getting a response from the from the government. Unless you're saying usurp and circumvent the United States government, I don't know that you've got an argument with Rick Perry on this one. Yes, you do. That you can't. You're, you're absolutely right. We can we can ask them not to do that deportation through our state. But when they say we're gonna, we better secure that border so those guys don't come right back across. All right. So, and so, that's so, what so I'm you would, saying. All right. So you you would put you would put law enforcement so. you would put law enforcement officers on that border no matter what the federal government says. That's right. Okay. Um, uh, when it comes to the 10th Amendment, we've got health care being shoved down our throats. We've got uh, cap and trade potentially going to be shoved down our throats. What do you know of the 10th Amendment? I know that, that, that it's actually the amendment that says, you know, we'll create the federal government because we need somebody sort of to be our backup plan in case we need help. But other than that, the states will, will, will rule and govern and run themselves. We've gotten away from that in this country. How would you, re, uh, how would you use that 10th Amendment to our advantage and, uh, and keep down the size of what looks like like it's becoming a tyrannical government out of Washington. Thomas Jefferson said it is the unquestionable right of the states to determine when the federal government steps outside of the Constitution and the rightful remedy is nullification and interposition. We haven't used those tools. They need to be used very aggressively. I am speaking uh, everywhere I speak, asking people to call the attorney general and ask him to begin those legal arguments today to stop cap and trade and to stop nationalized health care. Well, does the no attorney general do that or does the governor that. do that? Is it the attorney the, general's job or is it the governor's job? The, the AG is going to make the argument in the federal court system for us. Okay. The governor is going to issue the order to interpose and the legislature would be the place for the nullification action where we pass legislation 
as the legislature in Montana did a number of years ago, nullifying federal law that reaches right. outside of the Constitution. It's, it's Deborah Medina. We're talking to the candidate, uh, a Republican candidate for governor, Deborah Medina. And it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, Gov- you. Governor Perry, um, as you know, well, he calls into the show all the time. We've also talked to Senator Hutchison plenty of times. Uh, governor Perry is trying to, to, to be the conservative here. He's trying to be the Tea Party candidate. He's the one that fielded questions about Texas secession, and that gave him a lot of support with Tea Party supporters, with Tea Party goers. Um, K. Billy Hutchison is more of the big tent moderate Republican, according to many of the pundits. Where do you fall in, in line here? Are, are you uh, to the right of both of them? I am a strong proponent of sovereignty. This is the greatest nation that's ever existed. The union is important. It is disingenuous on the part of the governor to toss out uh, secession as though it's it's a it's an easy thing, and I have said in in Austin, Texas, that we better be careful about that path. That is that will be a bloody path. The proper remedy, the remedy the founders told us we were going to have to use, and it is our duty to keep that federal government in yeah. check. The unquestionable right of the state is nullification and interposition. I, I That's do, the it, first. I'm running short on time, and, and we've gone for quite a bit here. Hopefully you feel like I've been fair with you. I want yes, to ask I you, do. Thank you, Joe. I, I want to ask you some very specific questions about issues that people care about, okay? You ready? Yes, sir. Abortion. Pro-life, period. Um, no matter what, uh, any circumstances. That's right. Support that mom uh, in that unwanted pregnancy. Very sympathetic and empathetic with her, but a life begins at conception. Must be protected. It is. Right. Uh, the most justice for protecting innocent life is a premier responsibility of the government. That unborn babe is the yeah. most innocent among us, and it must be protected in all circumstances. Okay, we, we agree. Capital punishment. Uh, uh, for capital punishment, recognizing that there are some crimes so heinous that the death penalty is the only just punishment. However, we, we clearly have some major problems with with those sentences in Texas, and we need to look very closely at those cases. I've, say, I've gone as far as saying we may need to place a moratorium yeah. on executions until we get these studies done and until we understand that that beyond the shadow of a doubt, that person is guilty of the crime for which they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Toll roads. Uh, absolutely opposed. Uh, private property ownership is an essential element of freedom. Uh, there's lots of reasons why what we're, what we're talking about on toll roads is bad policy, uh, in, in many instances threatens our sovereignty, and certainly destroys private property ownership rights in Texas. Um, uh, well, we're talking about private property, eminent domain, and, and Proposition 11 that just was passed. Were you for that? I, I did support that. I said that is certainly not as strong as what we had and was vetoed by the governor in 2007. We've got to tighten that up and, and make sure that those eminent domain protections are, uh, are stronger. But that was a beginning, and we needed to take it. And so, yes, I supported Prop 11. Okay, I want to wrap it up. I'm, I'm going to give my opinion, and I might as well give it with you on the phone. Um, first of all, I appreciate anybody who wants to take part in the process. I appreciate that you're getting, there's certainly a grassroots movement where a lot of people believe that your candidacy is going to go somewhere. I've got no problem if it does. Again, I haven't endorsed anybody yet. I will eventually before the March primary. Um, it's going to be very, very tough when you've got two huge political names on the Republican side and K. Bailey Hutchins. And, and Rick Perry, um, and, and you're you're a very intelligent woman. Obviously, um, it, it's, it, is this in the hopes of getting enough name recognition that down the line you can run, or do you really, honestly, Deborah, think you've got a chance this time? Uh, I, I really, honestly, believe we're going to win this time. I'm not building some kind of uh, political war chest so that I can do something later on. We are spending the money as it comes in where I'm busting my butt and we're going to win this race. Uh, tough and Texan go hand in hand, don't they? Tough, honest Texan goes hand in hand and we're going to win. We've got support coming in from all across the state. I'm headed to the Valley today. Yeah. We'll be in Corpus tonight and down in Harlingen, McAllen and Brownsville this weekend uh, working with uh, folks all over the state to make sure they're engaged. They know they've got a candidate that they can be excited about and I'm happy uh, to represent and carry that mantle. It's Deborah Medina. We appreciate the time, Deborah. She's a candidate Republican running for governor here in the great state of Texas. And there you go. I mean, to look up Deborah Medina on the Google, on the, we'll try to get a link on my, on my part of the website. You can look her up. Uh, you know, answer the questions honestly. There you go.
Write down the list. Hopefully you got some information out of that.